Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about inscribed angles and intercepted arcs of circles. So over here on the left side of the screen we have in three different colors our three different uh, vocabulary words that we want to talk about. So in yellow we have inscribed angle and it just says that an angle whose vertex is on a circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. So I've got that in yellow so if we look over here at the circle on the right side of our screen we see our inscribed angle here in yellow. So this would be like angle BAC or you could just call it angle A for right now. So the vertex here is right there on the circle and the two sides of the angle are chords AB and chords AC. So that's what we call an inscribed angle. Next we have an intercepted arc, which is just an arc that lies between two lines, rays, or segments. So here would be our intercepted arc, um, which is arc BC, okay? And lastly, we have this word subtend. So subtend just means when the endpoints of a chord or arc lie on the sides of an inscribed angle. So that's what subtend means. So if we look at the bottom of our circle here, we can use intercept and subtend to describe what's happening in our circle. So angle A intercepts arc BC, arc BC subtends angle A, and also chord BC subtends angle A. Okay, so now let's talk about how we actually find the measure of an inscribed angle. Well, the measure of the inscribed angle is related to the measure of its corresponding arc. So here, if we wanted to find the measure of angle BCD, we're gonna look at arc BD. And how does it relate? Well, the angle measure BCD is one half of the measure of the arc. All right, so let's look at some examples where we use that information. Okay, so example one, we want to find the measure of arc BD. So that would be right here, arc BD. So we know that our angle here is 42 degrees. So that means 42 is half of the measure of this arc. So this here is going to be 84 degrees. Okay, so we just did 42 times two. And lastly, we're gonna find the measure of angle D. So the measure of angle D is right here and is going to be half of the measure of arc CE. So we're gonna say that angle D is 30 degrees because 30 is half of 60. All right, that's a good example too. A little bit of a different diagram here. Um, first, we wanna find the measure of arc E, A, B. So right there. Well, we see that we have angle 85 degrees right there. So we can multiply 85 times two to find the measure of that major arc. And that's going to be 170 degrees. And now we wanna find the measure of angle E, D, B. So this angle right here. Well, if you notice, the end points of this angle are right here which means if this arc was 170 degrees, then my angle right here is going to be half of 170 degrees. So that's gonna give us 85 degrees. So now this last question asks us, how do angles EDB and ECB compare? Well, as we can see, they're both 85 degrees, right? So they have the same measure. They're both 85 degrees. So that brings us to this sentence here in yellow at the bottom. It says, if two angles of a circle intercept the same arc, then the two angles are congruent. Okay, so let's look at what that says there. Two angles, so that was angle EDB and angle ECB. If they intercept the same arc, well, they're intercepting the same arc because both of their endpoints of these two angles are E and B, which is part of the major arc EAB. So we could say that those two angles are congruent. Last example, kind of going off of that sentence we just looked there, says find the measure of angle A. Well, the measure of angle B here is 65 degrees, and notice how angle A and angle B both intercept arc CD. So that just means angle A is going to be congruent to angle B, and that would be 65 degrees, okay? So that is how we can handle some problems with inscribed angles and intercepted arcs of circles.